I'm saying the setup it's like identical literally always man this is this is how i like it always to my left <laughs> yeah the yeah that's always the the right i don't i don't know it's not i don't like turning to the right i like turning to the left that's why i've always said <laughs> yeah, it yeah. are you left-handed yeah. or right-handed i'm right-handed right mm. but was that on the um, saying, was that on the it. huh no, I was saying that. I hear what you're saying. If you're used to it, if you used to turn it to one side, yeah, changing that whole thing is crazy. It would be weird to to have I don't know the simps on that way and the camera this. Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> First world problem. Is that, is that on your on list show. of uh, priorities when you moved into the new place? Must have space on the left for. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> I'm <doing> it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. How you settling in over there? Good Fully man. Now. Finally in the flow of things now mm, yeah I got my coffee spot got my places that i know where i go a lot got my gym nice got my routine now so i'm kind of back in the game again nice nice yeah, man. Flowing. yeah seeing it look like you you found a nice gym some nice um place to spar at as well so mm, yeah you're doing some some training at my tie yeah, I haven't I haven't done any Muay Thai yet, just just a bit of boxing, but I do wanna oh, okay. I do wanna do some Muay Thai. It's just I mean it's a bit of an excuse, but just finding the time, I guess you could say. Of course, yeah. Because when that makes sense. Yeah, no, I just I just need to like put it into the schedule and find a way to make it fit. I hear that. Yeah. Is that at the same place? I never really got gym? into like proper like training like that. I never got into like MMA training, boxing training. Maybe did like a few random sessions, but it was never something that I just fully got into, like the gym. Mm. Um, but when I like the few times I did it, it was always like sick fitness. Like yeah. you'd always, you'd always use so much energy. Even just throwing a few punches just takes oh, up so man. much energy. Mm. You don't realize yeah, it do you, until you actually punch some pads. Yeah, yeah. That was, it was the first time I boxed in a while, and my shoulders after like the first round was so dead already because it's, it's just like a, it's a different kind of movement to like lifting weights. So when yeah, you're just yeah. in that, in that kind of mind, you just, you're, it's, yeah, it's a whole different fitness. It's like a shock to the system. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think out of all the sports, that's probably like the most exhausting. Like you, you can play, if you don't, if you don't play football for like a good few months and you come back to it, you're a little bit gassed, but you can still like, you can still last, but yeah, boxing, mm. A whole different, it's a whole different ball game, or like any fighting, really. Yeah, definitely. Like, literally. No, you mind, guys like, kickboxing as like... well on my tie. Like that looks like a whole other ball game. <laughs> like those those guys, their legs are just so fucking strong. I won't man, <laughs> not so feeling to get kicked by one of them. Oh man, fuck that. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> brutal, man. I went to watch one when I went to Thailand, and um. <laughs> It was definitely rigged. It was just like such a scam to go in there. Like we <laughs> paid for some VIP, and I can't remember how how much it was like compared to the normal ticket. But literally, when we sat down, we were just like a tiny bit further forward, no special seats, no nothing. And then some guy just came over with a piece of cardboard, and he would wrote on it VIP, just in handwriting. <laughs> oh my! He just God. put it in front of our table. Wow. <laughs> and then you wow. knew that the fights were rigged because you, you could place bets on everything. So mm -hmm. when um obviously everyone was putting money down on things and then when you saw that a fight was going your way where like most people had uh bet on this guy just something weird would happen in the fight where he'd like purposely fall down where you know it's just a oh my God. it was like mm. one of the scammiest things i've seen but it was probably just where we were it wasn't like a, a professional professional one so you yeah. know what they were doing with the tourists there but the actual like sport like kickboxing on my tie like it's serious to watch those Definitely, guys are hard man. man i went to um there's this one every friday night or every other friday night in one of the massive stadiums here and it's run by you ever heard of one fc it's like the asian yeah. version of the yeah. oh, okay, Rogan yeah. podcast. but they, they've taken over the muay thai on the friday night there and they pay way more like way more than ever before so now mm. the fighters are really going after it Mm. so i went to a fight let's say there was 12 flights there was like 10 knockouts which was crazy a couple of people got Jeez. stretched off as well oh damn. usually brutal, muay thai man. fights start slow in the first round because the fighters yeah. are feeling each other out and then they go for it but because they get 
like if you win, you get such a huge bonus. They just go at it straight away from the, from round one. That's, That's crazy. crazy. Yeah, I've been hearing that. Like, I'm not, I'm not fully tapped into like I don't watch a lot of UFC or any kind of combat sport like that. But I've been um hearing that uh, Mai Tai is just like growing and growing. It's just getting mm. quite big at the moment. Mm. I just hear that from what Rogan says on his podcast. Yeah. I've got no evidence to back it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. Did you guys well, I did see, see um... that Tyson's going to be fighting Jake Paul? Oh, I was just oh, about to say that. Oh, that's so crazy, random. Man. What the fuck, man? What is happening? I was just scrolling and then I saw that. I was like, what? No, we're definitely that's in a simulation. Said. Definitely in a simulation. Yeah. I know, what the fuck? Did you watch the Cat Williams podcast, Joe Rogan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was sick. Yeah. Uh, it, was it wasn't okay. what I expected. I thought yeah. it was going to be like, because he's usually quite hype, Cat Williams, isn't it? But this was like, it was like a real good stoner conversation where yeah. the stuff they yeah. were talking about, just like aliens, conspiracy theories and shit. But I, I oh. love that stuff, man. I was fully tuned into it. Yeah, it was almost like the Dwayne Johnson one where it's like you expect it to be kind of like, I don't know, they just like, they'd speak about some more like topics more more like related to them. But yeah, yeah, they were just talking about like conspiracies for like three hours. So mm. it kind of just like, oh, it's okay. I feel like He's a smart guy job. though. He's a, he's a deep thinker. Yeah. I kind of like it when it's like that because we've heard interviews before where you just hear about the come up stories and stuff. But I mm. like those random conversations. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But yeah, but... you're going to watch the, the AJ fight tonight as well. Yeah, oh, I definitely want to tune into that. Yeah, I'll that's watch gonna that. That's going to be sick. Do you know what time it comes on? I tried searching yesterday and it, I think it was roughly going to be like 11 p.m. their fight. Yeah, so you never know because it depends on the, the previous ones, doesn't it? But I think it's yeah, going to be around then. Yeah, no, I definitely want to tune into that. What, what are you guys saying? Who's going to take that? Hopefully don't AJ. Know, you know. Hopefully um, AJ. Don't know. Because when, when he fought Fury will fight. Tyson Fury, everyone was saying that he actually won. And. Mm-hmm. Mm. people were saying that he got he got scammed really like the judges just gave it, it, to, it to Tyson when really he won yeah so he, I don't know maybe it's something similar I'm not sure mm. hopefully hopefully AJ wins on? hopefully because then if he wins then he'll fight Tyson and because Tyson's already fought yeah. Manu. but I know I, I agree with you I watched that I watched the Fury fight and I think we spoke about it as well, didn't we, Ocean? Like, it did seem like Ngannou was like landed the better punches, maybe mm-hmm. not as many, yeah. but the like the more impactful punches. Whereas Fury was just kind of tip tatting all the way around, and yeah, wasn't very good. Um, yeah, yeah I, I have one. no idea who's gonna who's gonna win. I think it's quite even to be fair, but Francis does seem quite confident. Hmm. Mm. In the interviews, Anthony Joshua does seem quite quiet, but then you just never know. Like he might just he he might just have that secret kind of confidence. Like I'm ready. Yeah. I don't need to say too much. Yeah, his yeah, last exactly. couple of fights, he seems more like more mellow and more like quiet. So mm. maybe it's who knows? Who knows? You never know with boxing, do you? I guess. No, exactly. Yeah. Be an interesting one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's we'll yeah, with you guys? Oh, there you um, go, Jay. You got well, the last, last week, recently, haven't you? We had the um, yeah, we launched that Planet Drill Bundle on Friday, which mm-hmm. is going well. Um, so yeah, definitely happy with that so far. I was just saying to to Liam, like this week I've been kind of, <laughs> you know, when you have like a launch right or a deadline for something, and you you just like you're working like crazy hard up to it. Mm-hmm. When that launch happens, like this week, I've just felt a bit aimless, where <laughs> I'm not doing. I don't feel like I've accomplished much. You know what mm. I mean? Like maybe I've made a few beats or I've done my video and stuff, but then I feel like I've been procrastinating a lot this week. But I think I always get like that the week after a launch because you put everything into the launch and then the next week you're not really aiming towards anything. So yeah. I usually have a week like that and then next week I'll be like, right, let me think of a new plan now, the next thing to mm-hmm. focus on. I always need a deadline or just something to focus on. Otherwise, I just feel like, I don't know, I'm just working aimlessly, if that makes sense. Yeah, I hear that. Do you have well, the next project yeah. lined up? I've got a few ideas. A few ideas. I think it's I'm gonna step away from drill, man. I've done so many like drill bundles and stuff. And I don't know what you guys think, but 
I don't know. Joe's just not the same as it was a couple of years ago. I feel like it's definitely dying out a bit. Hmm. Um, so I'm just trying to rethink things a bit. I've got a few different ideas. But we'll see. Mm. We'll see. Maybe something, maybe something like soulful boom bap, or mm -hmm. maybe just more like like trap and real rap type of stuff. But mm. I'll figure it out. Yeah. How about you guys? Um, just just normal stuff, really. I, I've been thinking about redoing my Discord, and then mm. I've got an idea for like a new like a community that I want to kind of start up. Um, yeah. But yeah, literally, I've only, only just started looking into it. So I'm going to yeah just plan more into that this next couple of weeks. And then, nice. yeah, just come up with like a more like a solid plan for it. Well, yeah, it's quite interesting. Now. Have you guys been getting ads from school this last couple of weeks? Or about a month, last like month or so? From the app? Yeah, from the site. The, what's his name? Alex Ramosi. Alex, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. I use right. school for my for my course. Mm. Yeah, it does look quite good for that. Um, he's, the ads he's been the ads he's been posting is for he's running like a school games just to, you know to get people into oh, that. Yeah, true. yeah, and um, yeah, I've I've kind of signed up for that, so I'm, that's why I'm kind of planning this community thing. Get the Discord mm -hmm. going, like good, and then maybe set up um like a, a paid community as well. That's like way more, you know, like it's just way more stuff in there for, for producers, like more courses, kits, calls and all that kind of stuff. That's what I did with the Creators Club as well. You could check out a platform called Circle, which is why yeah. I just switched to. That's, that's okay. a good, that's, that's, I'm in a couple of courses that use Circle. Mm. I really like it. Mm. As like a consumer, I really like it. Yeah. A lot of people have, have said that. Like the way I had mine set up before was like, the, the website was on WordPress and then we were running like five different apps just to get this one thing to work. Like there was an app for the social side, an app for core side, an app for this, and it was a bit long. But then with Circle, it just brought everything together. It just mm -hmm. made way more sense to use that. And when I got feedback from everyone who switched over to the new one, they're, they're all preferring the new one. So right. I, I definitely recommend checking out that. Mm. Nice. It's kind, of, it's kind of like school, but with a Discord element where people mm. can oh. chat. Oh, that's sick! Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll have to check that out then. So it's for courses and for like community as well then. Yeah, yeah. I'll say so. so you can set up spaces. So the way I've got mine set up is, like, you you can kind of give people tags, and those tags will give you access to certain things. So if someone's like, say, my course is in there, but not everyone in the course is a part of the creators club, the the private community. But then there's a chat room where everyone can speak. So it's like if you're a course member or a um, just a, a membership um, like part of the creators club you can all speak in one room but then there's separate ones for the course members and the creators club and um, mm. yeah so obviously you can have your course there but it can be locked until someone's a member of it and then right. yeah you can pretty much set up a space for, for anything you want really and then just assign tags to people mm -hmm. who well that's going to determine like what they can access in circle oh yeah, yeah I'm going to have to check that out yeah that sounds interesting yeah it's good yep. man i'm just it's like a learning curve because it's because I, I use discord as well and i wasn't always the most active in there to kind of like send people away from discord to go in your own community you need to be even like more active in that and i'm not as active as i should have been you've got to like constantly drop stuff for people man if, especially if they're paying monthly so mm. it's like extra tutorials kits like anything um i do a lot of live sessions with them but I'm finding that I need to be like way more active in there, so mm -hmm. it yeah. can take up a lot of time if you want to do it properly. But I'm learning mm. that. Yeah, that's the only thing I'm trying to weigh up. Like, will I will I have the um, will I be available? You know, to be in there as much as I should be. Yeah, you know, especially if you're charging people, you need to kind of be in there, don't you? Maybe a daily course, loops yeah. or yeah, like a, a in depth tutorial, just maybe just like stock load it with a bunch of content that's unlockable over time mm -hmm. but yeah I'm, yeah i know what you mean so but it's good though i think that community aspect's real important man yeah i saw um you know eddie abu the inst the guy that's been going oh, crazy yeah. recently i was on school and on the school oh, games yeah. bro he is caking it on school there's like a leaderboard that shows you uh that the whole point of school games is to 
compete with with other communities and see who can get the most mm. people in and you know okay. like start you know bringing in the most monthly recurring revenue and yeah. i was like oh, i'll just check out the leaderboard to see who's up there anyone i recognize and then there's a few guys that i didn't know and then i saw eddie abu at like number four number three or something like that no way and he had two 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 point four thousand uh, two and a half thousand members and they were all paying 25 uh, 27 pound a month so he was Jeez. making like 40 grand like 40 grand a month when i worked That's it out crazy. i was like Oh, did like you just check it out? Like, did you see what type of stuff he was posting in there? Um, you have obviously you have, you have to pay to get in, but I looked at his um about page, like the the sales page, right. and um I think he before he had like a Facebook page where that was what he wanted to do for free, but because it was mm-hmm. free, there was there was like thirty thousand people in there, and a lot of people were just trolling and spamming and kind of like right. sabotaging the page, which is why he set up the paid version. And, yeah. Um, I think it's like he's got like a lot of e like ebooks in there that he's wrote um, live sessions with his daughter who cooks meals, basically eggs, <laughs> eggs and <laughs> yeah. <for me>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um But it looks worth it. It, it seems like it's got like a, a bunch of content in there that's that's, that's helpful. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah. I didn't know you could do that with school. That that was one thing I never actually looked into. Um. I think on what the, the heat guys that set up circle for me, they said that they looked into school and they just found a couple of limitations with it, but I can't remember like what they were, but that's mm-hmm. kind of cool that you can see the scoreboard and everything like that. And to see, yeah. um, I don't know. It's like a little boost to compete against them. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy, man. Yeah. On it, honestly, I'm that? kind of thinking of um, switching from school to circle just because of the, because circle is, is quiet. It's not the same as discord at all. But it's just got that mm. element where people can talk in real time. Whereas yeah. like school doesn't. School is more like a Facebook group from back in the day when you would make a post and people would comment underneath you. Right. That, that's yeah. what I'm what, I just literally made people switch from what was I using Thinkific. before? Thinkific. Oh to okay. school. And then make them switch again from school to circle. It's kind it's kinda of long. Yeah. But I think circle I is just, it's a nice experience, you know? Definitely. Yeah. What course of courses have you taken on there? Um, circle. I'm going through like a YouTube one at the moment. Mm. On school, I've gone through so many, man. Um, I'd have to log in and check because I can't even yeah. remember. Yeah. Did you see Eddie post that that video with my beat? That guy. Yeah. That did, like, I for- yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? So someone did like an Eddie Abu song. Uh, mm-hmm. use my beat you're just rapping like about eddie just about oh, like sick. not in a negative way just like how he's like inspired him you know what i mean he's just chatting yeah. about kind of like something like munya would do and um eddie i think he was getting everyone to tag eddie and then eddie shared the post with him but like you know it's like a collab post on instagram so mm-hmm. he was going crazy on it i think wow, anything that... that eddie does right now just goes viral let's yeah, see man. what it's on now Cause... can you imagine you be got a placement with eddie abu <laughs> I know. You He's in the, in the Instagram too. bio credits, Eddie Abu. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they did a music video too, and Eddie's actually in that. I think he went to the gym that Eddie owns. Oh, got sick. him in the video. Man. Let me see what views it's on. How did they get the beat from YouTube? Just like your YouTube type beats? I'm assuming so, yeah. It was on that channel. So I think they just got it from there. He said he'd been watching the channel and stuff for a while as well. So maybe he's. He's made beats before too. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I can find it. <laughs> He's funny though, man. He cracks me up. He gets a lot of hate as well, but I like him, man. Well, Eddie. Yeah. 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 Have you ever tried a chicken breast movie? <laughs> nah, I can't go no. that far. Would you? Is that what he puts? Is that what he's done on it? Is that what he's been pushing? Cause, it, cause he did once, cause, um, cause I guess chicken is probably like one of the best protein sources, chicken and eggs. So he yeah. was like, "Why take protein powder? Just use chicken." Oh my god, what? <laughs> ended up the chicken. That is mad. I'll see That's if I can try and find you the video and send it after. <laughs> that is jokes. Man, he's so funny. So it's almost got like thirty thousand likes. So it must have done a lot of views. Hmm. Wow. But then this will be interesting, actually, because he put out a music video. Because a lot of people think that, yeah, see, like, he posted a music video six days ago. 
and it's got 700 views. But then the actual collab post with Eddie has got like 30,000 likes. So that's kind of interesting, really, because obviously a lot of people that producers are artists, they think, oh, if I just get this guy to, to share my music, Ocean will just post this beat yeah. for me then. <laughs> I'll get all this attention. But it doesn't really translate to anything. It's just like, okay, yeah, it's a bit of attention on that post, but it's like, mm. I don't know. It's, it's not going to change your life, you know what I mean? It's mm. just like yeah. a little boost. Yeah, hundred percent. Unless you're like, and that's like the the clip of that gets reposted. The thing that you do, if the thing that you've done in it is like crazy, you know, like yeah, really attention grabbing. Then people are like, oh, who's this guy? But if if it's just something that is good, like good good content, but it's not like yeah, it has to be amazing, doesn't it, for people to be like, oh, who's the guy? That, you know, who's the, who's the other guy? Yeah, of course. So, yeah, so it was it was getting some attention, like um, like GRM posted it. A um, couple other of those like blog pages posted it. Yeah. Um, Eddie Boo's got like three million followers, so it's like you'd think that's like a lot of attention on someone. I was swear, like, yeah, like, that's on Instagram. He's got th- three million followers on Instagram. Crazy. I swear, he was at like two mil like a month ago. Like, Maybe. Literally, that's crazy, man. It's crazy how the fitness niche never dies. There's just always yeah. new takes on it. Yeah. Yeah. There's always someone new coming every year with their new take on it. Like now it's Eddie Abu. Maybe mm-hmm. two years before it was the Liver King. A couple yeah. years before it was someone else. Mm, always, that's true. Every, it's, but it always just comes down to the same thing, really. Like just eat kind of healthy. Eat and good, cool, yeah. Have a lot of protein. Yeah. Don't yeah. be lazy Exercise. and eat clean. Like we've all known for years that we shouldn't be eating processed shit, really. But. Mm-hmm. And it's just kind of the way he's like presented it has been like, fuck you all, like stop eating this shit, don't be stupid. Mm-hmm. Like he's more blunt with it. So mm-hmm. I feel like you have to be like that on social media almost. Because if you were just scrolling through and he was just like, hey guys, just wanted to say, yeah, you probably shouldn't eat this. People are going to be like, oh yeah, next. But because he's there saying, stop eating fucking shit, you're like, oh. <laughs> and then you just take Make it in, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I guess with Eddie, it's a bit different because. Like Liver King, he was just scamming people. <laughs> like he was on roids. Oh yeah. He was just trying to push his own products. supplements. Supplements, mm-hmm. yeah. Whereas Eddie's more like obviously he's got his community, he's got his, his ebooks and stuff, but he's not really pushing that like that kind of lifestyle where he's saying like if you eat this, you're gonna look like this. It's more just like just getting people to be healthier, which is yeah, yeah. it doesn't seem as I mean, it isn't as it isn't scammy at all, really, is it? So yeah, yeah I've seen good. like a few people hating on him for like having ebooks. People are like, "Yeah, he's just saying all this so he can sell his ebook." But I feel like he was doing it before that. And why would you not try and monetize that attention? Like, if you're yeah. getting all these views and everything, like, why not put something out there where you can monetize from it? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure yeah. his ebook is full of value as well. You know? Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, let's talk about producer stuff. <laughs> <laughs> nah. well, are you guys working on anything new? Well, obviously, you've got the community coming. What about you, Ocean? Are you working on any like packs or anything like that? Um, I've definitely got a pack in the works, but it's not even like close to being ready. Like I've just decided, right. okay, this is the direction that I want to do. Yeah, and start to work on it. Honestly, just because anything it, you can it, speak it on, yeah. Um, it's gonna it's gonna be something that is more around a sound, more about okay. like an ambient kind of ethereal kind of sound. I right. feel like I'm I'm really drawn to myself. Jeez, yeah, I'm really drawn to myself. Um, yeah. So I want to start making that kit, but honestly, like it's taken me longer than I thought to settle in. You know what I mean? So I had to get the live Gosh. shit sorted first then get back mm-hmm. into videos and now I can start thinking about all the other things now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, man. When it's a big change like that, like moving to another country, that's bound to throw anyone off track a little bit. Yeah. Like I, if, I if all that shit's it, going on, you can't fully focus on, on work, can you? Literally, I landed on Saturday and I thought, oh yeah, by Sunday for sure I'm going to have an apartment. <laughs> and then I was thinking, okay, by Monday I'm just going to be locked in filming videos, but yeah it took way longer than that it took maybe like almost a month to find like a good place so yeah i underestimated it a bit but it's all good now yeah now now like 
the things are flowing and soon I'll drop the kit when it's when it's ready I don't want to rush it either you know of course yeah now that yeah. makes sense what do you yeah. guys think is going to be the the new wave obviously there's always like a few new waves but I keep thinking about this like what like what's the what next most thing people into like these days like obviously there's mm. like a bit of like hood trap hype I don't know if that's going to fully stick I'm not, not really tapped into it too much um I do think drills dying off like a little bit Mm -hmm. It's taking like some different turns. Like there's obviously people making like Afro drill and stuff like that. It's, it's still around, but it doesn't have the same hype. I don't think as it as it did a while back. So mm. yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't know what the it's, next it's, thing's it's gonna in, be. It's in a bit of a limbo. A I feel like spot. everyone is kind of like niche down a bit, right? Everyone's kind of mm -hmm. just doing like, very particular beats and yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Do you feel? Do you feel like it's all the mate, all the big niches like drill? That was kind of like one big umbrella trap. Mm. How do you think all of those are like well established now? And now it's more like a bunch of mini waves where people have, are finding like, or just making these weird, not weird, but like, you know, sub genres of drill, like Jersey drill. And then there's like the Brazilian stuff. And then there's HUD trap. Do you know what I mean? Do you feel like people are just, it's more about, it's more like these mini waves of, of sub genres as opposed to like one big hit of like, I don't know, just a completely new thing. Yeah, maybe, maybe, but also like usually a genre becomes really popular when an artist kind of blows up with it. Mm -hmm. But is there many artists that are really dropping, jumping on hood trap beats and, and dropping them as songs? Because I know I've a only lot seen of them a couple. remixes. Yeah. A lot of the big viral I've only ones. seen a couple. Yeah. But even so like... I don't know. I, last year I was thinking Jersey's going to be the next big thing. Yeah. There isn't like massive Jersey hit songs, right? Or maybe I just can't think of it. Maybe Not country? Well, kind of. It's um thingy, uh, Nicki Minaj and DJ Smalls, 732. That attracts massive right now. You know which one I mean. Um, maybe if I hear it. Let me find it. You would have heard it's out all over radio. It's huge. Um, the Minaj. It's called Everybody. It's like everybody, every. Watch, let me play it. You'll know. Oh, they sampled that. Yeah. Can you hear that? Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Perfect sample. This really... Yeah. Yeah. I've never heard that it. Track I got... can't lie. No way. <laughs> but honestly, I'm a bit out of the loop with music. I, have, yeah, I still haven't listened to Kanye's album. You haven't listened still to Kanye's album? Nah, not yet. Oh, for uh, real? Yeah. I'm, I'm in this weird phase of like, not wanting to listen to anything. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, in the yeah, gym, yeah. I'm not even listening to music anymore, really. Unless like it's a really hard lift and I'll just phone like a hard song and then that's it, turn it off. Mm. Just been... Yeah, it's a bit of... It's, it's, it's kind of weird. I've just been creating just from scratch kind of or just like maybe from a midi or something like that but haven't really listened to anything new to take inspiration from mm. it's interesting do you feel like it's because there's nothing that's really interesting you you know like i don't know there's nothing exciting to talk about or i wouldn't really like say it's... that mm. because i'm sure there is like really good new music out there but I just haven't I haven't tapped into it to say like if it's good or bad or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I hear that. Do you listen to um a a lot of podcasts instead? Because I was going through this thing where, like, obviously just making music all day and just kind of listening to it in your working life. Like as soon as I stepped out of that, like if I'm driving, mm -hmm. I always put a podcast on. It's yeah. very rare that I'll put music on in the car now, which is mad because I, I used to just love putting albums on in the car and just blasting them. But yeah, now, yeah. It's, I'm just around music all day. I'm just trying to zone out after that. Maybe that's why. Maybe it's because like I'm always around music. I'm always kind of making music. Why I don't yeah. really want to then listen to music. But I think it's just a phase. And then maybe like next month, ask me the same question. I'll be like, yeah, I'll check out yeah. this and that. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes, yeah, just need a, a a break from listening to music. But I hear you on the podcast thing. But then also, like, 
I've kind of weaned off of, of podcasts a bit as well, to be honest with you. Mm. I felt I, I got into a loop of like constantly listening to podcasts. Like if, I, yeah. if something wasn't on, then I'd just instinctively put a podcast on or a podcast yeah, or something. But then I wasn't, if it, let's say it's like an educational-ish podcast, I wasn't really retaining any information. Yeah. <laughs> It's just background noise. Yeah, it, it just yeah. becomes like, you become a bit numb to it. I get that. I get that. Yeah. And also with podcasts, it feels like, if you listen to like the same ones, it's like the guests get passed around or there's like a new thing to talk yeah. about that's like shocking. Like for the past few months, it's always been, or even like the past year, it's been like all the health stuff of like all the bad stuff that's going to kill us and give us cancer and that you shouldn't eat and all this. And I was like tapped into it because I wanted mm-hmm. to educate myself. But then after a while, it's like, man, I can't do anything. Like, this guy's saying I shouldn't do this. He's contradicting him, saying yeah. I shouldn't do what he says. And it's like, you feel a bit lost, don't you? Um, yeah. So, I don't know. I, then I started just tapping into, like, just comedy ones. Like, I'll just listen to, like, Theo Vaughn's podcast. And just, yeah. like, don't need to educate myself. I just, it's just on there. I don't just even need to retain fun. it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, 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 I kind of, like, switch up the vibe when, when I get into that state where I'm just feeling overwhelmed. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. sometimes I like to do that too. I mean, obviously, maybe it's not like the most productive, but sometimes it's nice to just have something that's not really anything. You can just listen yeah. to it. And it. I do that a lot yeah. with like the football ones as well, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely needed. Yeah, definitely. I know what you mean about the helpful, man. I saw this video, someone edited together like all these clips from all the all these big influencers talking about what's the right way to eat and what's the right yeah. thing. And it's mm-hmm. literally a minute, like two or three minutes long. And it's, it'll be like a clip of one guy saying, you shouldn't be eating fruits, it's full of sugar, like you're just boosting body blah. Then it cuts to someone else going, all I eat is fruit, man, it's a hundred percent fruit based diet. And it cuts to someone else talking about how you, you shouldn't eat eggs for it's bad for cholesterol and then you got eddie abu saying all you got to eat is eggs it, it was like literally two minutes <laughs> of just contradicting the uh, uh, views on like everything i was like fucking hell no wonder why no one knows what mm. to do <clears throat> but i, I guess yeah, it's just... podcast can be like very oh I was, just, I was just gonna say yeah like when when you have these so-called experts coming on and speaking sometimes it can be very like influential like oh fuck yeah let me try this out and you kind of like yeah. chase all these directions to come back to the same conclusion of like actually i'm just gonna do what works for me <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah literally right. i guess it's good to kind of keep stay curious and try you know especially for like health stuff just try new stuff like gym stuff but mm. you kind of take little bits from each strategy and then yeah just mold it into something that works for you i guess that's what they did and then you know, that, that kind of worked for them and then it worked for other people. So, yeah, I guess it just depends, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. And everyone's <laughs> an expert these days. So th- there's a guy called James Smith who breaks it down. Uh, he's, he's quite educational. And um, he's just like a no bullshit type of guy. And he talks about stuff like this. And he's saying, like, you've got to be careful where you get your information from. Because it's like all these people that are labeled experts on podcasts. It's like just because you're an expert doesn't mean you're right in what you're saying. He was kind of comparing it to if companies, like one company was suing another company. If they both went to court, like both of those people are like experts in their industry, but yeah. one of them is not right or both of them might not be right. Like you just don't know. Just because someone's an expert doesn't mean that they're going to be right in what they're saying. So you mm. kind of just have to, as they say, like take it with a pinch of salt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah literally. And that's, that, that's the thing with social media, like so-called new experts always pop up. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's like mm-hmm. I was saying before, like there's always the new guy. Yeah. With his direction, his his way, his philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. And because there's so the much content music, out there, you have to like to cut through the noise. You kind of have to. People think that they have to just say some wild shit just to get the attention. So yeah. Then are they being truthful with the wild shit they're saying? Yeah. It's a strange world. It, it's it's the thing because it it works as well, isn't it? Like. Yeah. It it just cuts through all the noise. If yeah. you can be super polarizing, then you can really get that attention. Yeah. Have you noticed that I in the producer we need to world? Start being, um, <clears throat> I was about to say that. We, we, we need to uh, start saying some, some crazy shit. Some wild shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to spend the worst VST ever. Fuck that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Headphones will kill you. <laughs> it's perfect clickbait. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do you remember when Chucky was doing the videos on TikTok? Like, no more hi hats. Hi hats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I guess of... it's like that. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, literally. Maybe that is because there isn't anyone really doing that. And uh, I'm trying to think if there is anyone like that in the producer community. Not in our circles, maybe. There's a couple of like, negative people out there. There's I guess a lot you of, got like, videos go. that I kind of see pop up in my timeline of people just like, I don't know, like they're, they're like just hating on other people, and the the thumbnail might just look a bit negative, and it kind of just draws mm-hmm. people attention. But well, usually, yeah, they're I guess... just like shitting on other channels or something like that. Yeah. I yeah, mean, I guess to be fair, there's always the, the conversation of like loops. If you're a real producer, if you use loops, that conversation's yeah, been happening man. for years. It probably is. Yeah, and that seems true. to be the one that like gets a lot of attention. That never goes away, ever. <laughs> yeah, it's wild that <clears> that's <throat> even still a thing. Mm. Yeah, literally. Yeah, I'm gonna have to switch some nails are about to change. <laughs> Just the most <laughs> clickbait stuff ever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, literally. If it was, uh, what kind of content have you guys been got in the pipelines? Are you, you say you're thinking about switching it up, Jay, or keeping it still drilly, but like a little bit more off? Yeah, I definitely want to like just switch it up. I'd, I'd always played around with different genres and like done, obviously, I've done some trap stuff, UK rap, boom bap, things like that. Um, but it all kind of went back to, to drill as like the main <clears> thing. <throat> but yeah, maybe I'll just switch it up a bit and maybe do a little bit less drill just to see what kind of response I get because mm. there's benefits to both isn't there like if you're known for like one certain thing then it's good because everyone comes to you for that thing but then you put yourself in a box as well because if that one thing like if drill just died out completely then it's like fuck right I need to switch up my whole game plan now but I kind of knew that from a while back so that's why I started like playing around with different genres and the other videos have done well too like if I do like a boom bat one for example they actually do kind of well um like the soulful stuff um it's, it's like hit and miss isn't it but i'm just not really sure where to take it yet i've just got some thinking to do mm-hmm, so yeah, yeah i think i might switch things a little bit i'm also thinking of i don't know i need to decide whether this one video a week thing was worth it i think in an ideal world i'd like to get like two videos up per week plus a shot every day but mm-hmm. how's that know. going for I you just, it's like in terms of like views and stuff it's actually going quite well because I don't know, like the one video that I don't upload on the Thursday kind of makes up for it with all the other videos. But what I'm finding is my website traffic's going down a bit. And I think that's because, I know we spoke about it maybe last week, but I just feel like it's harder to get people to click on something in a short piece of content. I feel like on the long form ones, it's way easier to just kind of talk about what you need to promote. And it, not that every video has to be promoting something, but especially like leading up to a launch for example i found when i was doing like the the longer videos people were way more likely to click on something like when i had a video go up on tuesday so the launch was friday and then i had a video go on uh yeah it went live this tuesday the the video and then when the video went up the sales went like right up again so that's the only thing i'm finding it's like harder to send people to your website so website traffic was down a bit because i'm only doing the one video but at the same time it's beneficial to have these videos up every day because like the overall views mm. have like gone up a bit and then obviously there's attention on other platforms as well like tiktok and instagram so it, it would be good if i could do two a week and the mm. shorts so like this year i just wanted to have like less days with the camera out you know what i mean yeah mm-hmm. do you think it's possible to like keep the same workload but still still be able to get another video done maybe you do one tutorial like you like you normally do and then one talking head video where it's there's no cooking up there's no screen recording it's just you talking and then you know well edited and stuff like you're more scripted potentially but then sometimes those scripted ones take a, a long time as well yeah you got scripted and when you script a whole video that actually takes yeah. a long time man. that takes yeah. a long time to write yeah yeah that's true and i don't think i'm the best at just sitting down turning on the camera and then just ranting about something and getting everything off my chest i kind of need to <laughs> have like a clear structure of what i'm going to talk about in a yeah, podcast you... it's a bit different because it's way more natural but when it's just you and a camera it's so hard to just rant like that's a that's a proper skill yeah and even when you rant there's like so much there's so there's even if it might save some time in the the first part you still have to go through and edit all the shit out that you don't need that's got, you know like you might be repeating yeah. yourself or you might be saying stuff that isn't relevant or going off on tangents so that even then you have to cut it down which takes longer on the back end but I guess if you've got someone editing, then that'll still that'll save time for you. But 
Yeah, that's still true. A tough, it's still a tough one. But yeah. potentially, yeah. Uh, LB, you, you switch from doing dailies now, right? So you're, you're more committed to just like, what, one or two a week? Yeah, one or two a week. And um, yeah, just finding better video concepts. Like like I said in that po- I think it was last week or maybe the week before when I was talking about um, researching, just finding like concepts that are working for smaller channels and kind of not even maybe in this niche, but concepts that have worked really well for other channels and then Mm -hmm. rehashing it into something that's more specific to like producers. So yeah, I've got a few, few videos lined up. I did, I I linked up with Ellis um, on Tuesday and we just went and did some filming uh so i've got one video with him dropping and then i did one with my i did one with my girl last week I went to a coffee shop <laughs> did some cooking up so yeah that one's dropping i think today oh yeah i'm gonna drop that one today <clears throat> um so yeah just more like yeah i'm just trying to really just just go for like more of the bigger not bigger not bigger ideas so to say but ones that are ones that are more likely to look like if I was to look at a video that they were like and I was like it had a million views I'd be like yeah that video deserves a million views that's what I'm trying to go for but stuff that's still doable you know not stuff that's like you need a crazy budget for or anything so Mm -hmm. yeah that's the that's the new lane that I'm trying to go down the dailies was fun and it was good for routine and especially for you know just making music consistently and you know not you know just being good at making beats but yeah, it just wasn't working. I don't think, I think you need to have like a huge it factor for the dailies to work and for people to be like, oh shit, like what's this guy up to every day? So for mm. Nick Mirror, I think it was working. I don't think he's doing it anymore, but <clears throat> the dailies was good for him because it's, you know, platinum producer. He's got crazy, crazy credits. Um, So it works for him. And then you got other niches, you know, like Sam Sulek, where, where he's, he's a big guy. You really want to know what he's doing <clears throat> every day because... Yeah. whatever he's doing is working um so yeah and yeah the views just weren't weren't working for me on um you know on the daily so yeah <clears throat> i wanted to switch up a little bit the ones that you're doing though are really cool though because it's people haven't really done it like the the bosco ones they're always yeah. really cool it's like a yeah. nice topic yeah i don't know why i stopped doing that to be honest i mean i did one with <clears throat> did a couple in london one with maxine and then I filmed one with this other guy that I haven't even posted yet. And um, yeah, yeah I, I can't lie, man. I, I mean, I, I Ocean with like the inviting musicians to the studio, those ones, whilst then, yeah, you course. know, obviously there's a lot more that goes into them and there's a lot more riding on them. They are really fun to make. Just, just having someone else in the studio just makes, I don't know, it's just a way yeah. more fun process. So yeah, I'm going to carry on the Busker series again. Um, and then also... Yeah, just try all these little ones, you know, like talking head ones that I think could do well and, you know, just, just bits and bobs, but, you know, all centered around producing. Definitely. So, yeah, that's the new way. Is it too early to say if it's been, if it's had a positive impact on the channel since you switched? Because you've only posted yeah. like two or three like the, like this, haven't you? Yeah, too early. Like the first one I did with, the first talking head one did really well. So I'm going to carry those on. That was one, one out of ten. And then the one I did with that guitar player where we did the reggae beat, that one did fairly well. Like, that was 2 out of 10. And then mm. um, the last one I did didn't do so well, but I don't think I did the thumbnail very well. So that might have been the problem. But yeah, it's, it's too early to tell, really. I'm just going to keep seeing what, you know, just keep yeah. going and seeing what happens. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. How about you, you Ocean? Know, Ocean, after you did your last one, like the talking one, um well that was like you moved to thailand video wasn't it and you said that mm-hmm. went straight to number one that was yeah. performing well isn't it has that made you rethink what you're gonna post um somewhat i mean i definitely do want to give a lot more value in my in my videos i mean i try to already but i definitely yeah. want to like just keep dropping tips and stuff um i don't know i'm in a weird spot with with my content a little bit and i'm still trying to figure it out because mm-hmm. there's stuff that i do want to do but then maybe I know like it won't necessarily get views. Right. But sometimes I'm I'm like willing to take that sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And then there's some videos that maybe is not the craziest idea on paper, but really will be useful for producers and even upcoming producers or anyone who's just interested in music production that I still yeah. want to get out. So it's it's hard for me to say like what direction I want to go in. 
it's it's not really one direction. It's a mixture of different things, really. I do like to vlog sometimes, but then sometimes I do just want to sit at my desk and just do a tutorial. But then sometimes I do want to collaborate with yeah. another musician and travel. So yeah, it's it's very um, it's hard for me to pinpoint just one direction. I think I'm just gonna keep trying many different things. Yeah, got you. So you yeah, yeah, we always the days, um, like... talk about these ideas and everything, and then it always comes back to the same thing, doesn't it? Of just like, yeah. all right, let's just keep trying. We'll just keep pumping out content and see which ones stick. Man, that's yeah. been like, I swear that's been what's happened for like the last, probably since we all started linking up, because we, like, like you say, we always have that conversation that, oh, what? Yeah. What's the next thing? And then it's always like, don't know, <laughs> just trying new shit, see what happens. <laughs> but I guess that's part of the part of the game, I guess. Ocean, do you ever miss like, the days when you had when you had Eves and you was in the in Piccadilly but the first time and you had mm-hmm. that routine of just doing like the the vloggy style intro trip to the studio cooking up very sort of like I don't know just because not not many people were doing that that style where like you had another person there filming in in, in a cool area as well and making like just I don't know, just cooking up, really. Did you miss that routine? Because I feel like that was... Kind of. Some, yeah. I mean, honestly, uh, today was the first time in very, very long time I looked at one of those videos. And it was only because I was getting B-roll from it for a new video that I'm about to drop. But then yeah. I, I was watching it. Like, I just stuck on a video and watched it and realised, like, whoa, that was actually super cinematic. That was a really cool shot. Yeah, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Little things like that. And then just for that split second, I was like, fuck. I'd love to make videos kind of similar to that vibe again because it was pleasant to watch even though sometimes i felt like the video pacing was extremely slow mm. and to me sometimes a little bit boring but the actual like cinematic of it was really really nice yeah and, um, i definitely would love to like bring that back again especially like now i'm in a new environment just showing that kind of lifestyle but honestly like i, I also think back to those times and wondered like how the hell did i keep up with that kind of schedule and how did ibrahim keep up with that schedule because it, it was very much on the go like we'd film monday and then he would have to get that edit to me by wednesday complete and then i film on wednesday and he's mm. got to get that edit back to me by like friday and i constantly keep going and going and i think it was before like the rise of shorts and stuff like that so mm. maybe that's why it was it was, it was a bit more easy i didn't really have to think about anything else apart from that video mm-hmm. or those two videos in the week there's a lot more to think about now yeah um, what were the shots like did you mean like the shots before you started the session like all the b-roll <laughs> like headed to the studio or do you mean when you're actually yeah, in the some, studio some stuff like that even the, the one i watched today when i was grabbing the b-roll it was as simple as me just like turning on the switch and like flicking it and then doing that shot and then doing the side yeah. from like me putting the record on the vinyl player and then putting yeah. the needle on the vinyl player like these little things but the, the details felt like really made a difference yeah yeah i feel I like that whole vibe really yeah mm-hmm. that whole vibe was really good man i remember like before we all started linking up like just taking in that content and i was just like no one's no one's doing it i think kyle was probably the closest in terms mm-hmm. of making it like just the visuals of it and the vibe but he didn't have that second person there with a gimbal and like that yeah. super smooth shot and the camera the lens was like like super like the depth was also, crazy I felt like YouTube was kind of shifting a bit because this was also like just before everyone started doing Mr. Beast and then the whole like yeah timeline just or well, the videos just really sped up I and mean, then YouTube was just it felt like YouTube was really pushing those kind of videos those big concepts it wasn't as simple as like I couldn't I mean I could but me going to the studio and just being like making a drill beat in the title it just wasn't yeah. hitting the same as like it did in the beginning of that in year. The beginning, yeah. <clears throat> I remember yeah. back then, man, there was um everyone had some sort of vlog element to their videos. I don't know who yeah, got it yeah. from who. Like I was definitely watching Ocean's videos and then I, I like started incorporating a couple like vlog bits. Like if I was going to London, I'd actually like film a couple bits in the house and then film the trip to London. You mm-hmm. had um obviously Kyle, he was doing some similar stuff with his runs and everything and the coffee. Yeah. Ed Talante, if you remember his videos back yeah, then, he'd be like, yeah. making Jones. a coffee, like the slow shots of making a coffee. Mm-hmm. Um, you, LB as well, like doing all the stuff from in, in Cyprus. In Cyprus, yeah. <laughs> Everyone had this sort of like vlog yeah. element and it was it was pretty cool at the time. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, I honestly really missed that kind of stuff. Me I, too, man. But that, that's, that, 
that's just me personally. Like, I prefer to watch content that's more vlogs. I know that's not everyone. Yeah, but I definitely like the the vlog elements because it's how you get to to know the the character a bit more. Yeah, yeah. like I, I watch LB because I watch LB. Like, yeah, you make music and you make good music, but I like to watch you or even just like someone outside of my niche. Mike first, and mm-hmm. I watch Mike first, and because it's Mike first, and I don't necessarily watch him because I want to learn the chest exercises. You know what I'm trying to yeah. say? <clears throat> yeah, 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 hundred percent. Be interesting to see if we just all agree to go back to that style of content. Make a choose. <laughs> like everyone, yeah. Here, yeah. Maybe we As should. As a collective, we'll just all, all like make a vow. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I stopped because when I used to look at my <clears throat> retention, I saw that people were just skipping the intro. The yeah. majority of people. So Literally. in my head, I was like, well, if most people yeah. are skipping it, what's the point in including it? But then also there's something to be said about the few people that are watching it. Like, I feel like they're really invested in you as a person. Like yeah. you were just saying, like they're watching the video because it's you rather than the mixing tip they're going to get like five minutes in. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, exactly. it's a tough one to balance because you think, all right, majority are skipping it. But then the ones that do, they're like, they get a lot from it. So then you yeah. don't really know what to go with because... Are you trying to go for just like maximum retention or are you trying to just, I don't know, please like your I, I think it depends audience, on like, if you get me. Yeah, because I, um, I mean, if you edit for the algorithm or the retention and stuff like that, you give yourself more chance to grow. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it is kind of difficult to grow like purely just off vlogs. It's not impossible. It can be done. But mm, yeah. if you have a cool idea, it can appeal to, to more people who don't necessarily know you. Maybe it's like a balance. Maybe you use yeah, those you. to blow up, and then, yeah, once you've established your your audience, then you can switch to ones where you can get more intimate and build more rapport. Even though a lot of people might end up going, but you still you've still got more of a a reach to then pull in the people that actually care. And then yeah, yeah, it's a hard one, really. <clears throat> yeah, it's a tough one. Do you think that maybe because of do you think maybe since we do all the vloggy stuff that when we when we all started switching to the retention stuff we lost do you think we lost more sticky like more sticky viewers and more sticky customers because they kind of lost that connection with like us as the producer not just like not just um watching the you know just a casual viewer maybe we are maybe switching to the retention stuff you just get casual viewers not actual fans and like true fans and like customers do you think or do you think it's just you know just random yeah i'm not sure it'd be interesting to to know because that mm. i'm trying to think like when my channel was a bit smaller and i had like the time to like reply to everyone for example i really like knew the community in a way where i'd like yeah. recognize i still do, do like now like i recognize like a lot of names in there but you know when your audience grows obviously it's harder to reply to everyone like i used to reply to everyone's dm everyone's email like just everything and I did feel a lot more connected and maybe people do love that connection that they can get. But then obviously once you've scaled up, it's like impossible. Like you could spend all day just replying to DMs and emails and stuff and you wouldn't get anything done. So some people might take it personally when you don't reply, but it's just that's just what it is. Um so yeah, I don't I don't know. Maybe there's some maybe that has played a bit of a part because maybe the people that you used to reply to all the time and connect with, you're not really there for them now so then they're not there for you you know what i mean mm. so it could play a part mm. yeah it's a fun man it's a fun but i do i do still recognize like a lot of the, the same names <clears throat> like if i go in a premiere for example there's some people that are always in there or if you do a yeah. live session they're always in there and that's yeah. always sick to see like when you know people by the name as well when you recognize it straight away yeah 100 percent yeah yeah i guess it's like anything man you just gotta keep just keep going and see what happens <laughs> but that's always the that, strategy that, that's yeah. how i'm thinking about these days like i'm not even of course i want to keep growing and that's the goal but i'm trying to be a bit more i'm trying to be a bit less intense about everything and just kind of let it flow and just keep just yeah. keep working just keep putting out videos just keep dropping content and what happens will happen I'm still, mm. but I'm, I'm definitely intentional about it, of course. But I've been doing YouTube for like what six, seven years. Mm-hmm. I just want to keep growing, keep going. Yeah, let's go for ten years. Let's let's see what happens <laughs> yeah. when we get to fifteen. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And doing it for that many years, you can probably look back and see 
even like just for me doing it a few years, I can already look back and see there's going to be waves. Like you have mm. those growth rates where you're going like that and then it's like that and then Plateaus. it's stable a bit and then you go through all these ups and downs, don't you? Yeah. So you would have seen even more of it doing it for like six, seven years. Mm. And then it, we've had all these thoughts before where we're like, oh, what's the next thing going to be? Like, where should I take my content? <laughs> and it, we all just keep going and then it seems to just work out. Like, yeah, it's not like yeah. any of us are losing our channels you know what i mean it's all still working out yeah man that's i think that's the thing man I, I always say this it comes down to like the same thing just just keep going like everyone asks what's what's the new source and what's all this or the new yeah it's good to have strategy and short-term strategy and all that all that good stuff but if you don't have that that very very solid foundation in your head where you're like it doesn't matter what happens i'm still gonna keep going if you don't have that then yeah. And all the other stuff's pointless, really. Yeah, and I, I think it's easy to get too tied up in in strategy. I think sometimes it's just you need action way more than than strategy. Yeah, hundred percent. Sometimes, yeah. like, I don't know when in the beginning, I had somewhat of a strategy, but not really. I was just following my gut and just posting and posting and posting and posting without mm -hmm. really thinking about the results. Until one day, you look up and be like, "Oh shit, yes, mm -hmm. I actually got hundred k subscribers," and I think. You, yeah, you can keep applying the strategy. Like, okay, if I talk about this video, then I'm going to get X amount of views. Yeah. I think, like, the key thing should just be, like, let's just keep moving, man. Just keep going. 100%. I feel like, it, I feel like it's easy. I guess it happens with... I feel like it happens in every every niche that when, a, when your channel or when a channel starts blowing up and there's way more eyeballs watching, your natural gut, your gut's always telling you, oh, you need to tighten up on this you need to make sure you check in analytics you need to make sure you're capitalizing on this and then all these all these external factors that you wasn't even thinking about during the whole part that actually made you blow up start coming in and your gut's telling you, you need to do all this extra stuff yeah it can make you that, in it, it's, that in itself ruins ruins the whole process yeah yeah for sure it can definitely make you like it, it might like, it might even stop you a little bit on your momentum because you're starting to overthink things now but it's it's like a fine line. It's like a balance. Like if you've been putting out a hundred videos and not one of them was connected, then there's probably an issue there. Yeah, which you need to think a bit more deeply in. It, don't, it probably won't make sense for you to keep to like release exactly the same one hundred. You have to figure something out there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. I kind of lost my train of thought. But it's it's just like that nuance that you need to yeah. figure out for yourself. Yeah, I guess for people watching as well, it's like you don't for one like you always think people like us have everything figured out because it's like oh he's going to his channel he must know all the secrets everything but really we're still we still feel like we're figuring things out and mm -hmm. then also like exactly what you just said you don't really know until you start putting the content out anyway so everyone like overthinks stuff before they even start it's like you're not gonna you're never gonna figure things out before you've even hit record and started making some videos so that's the one thing you just have to do, just start making the content and you'll learn a few things along the way. You'll figure out what works for you, what you enjoy yeah. doing. And then as cliche as we always say, it's just consistency, man. That's all it comes no, down to. It's, it's, it's true, man. It's, it's so true. true. I know people yeah. like to say it and it's like a buzzword, but there's no substitute for time and experience. No. You just have to, you just have to go through the process. Everyone mm. in anything that's, that's, successful or somewhat successful has done that to some degree yeah 100%. i guess you could say anyway. yeah i guess you could say it could be consistency linked with um linked with the the ability to to notice to not to notice trends but to notice when things are working number numbers wise for you and then just being consistent with the things that are working if that makes sense because like let's say i was let's say i was posting videos or like one yeah. of us was posting videos and one of them blew up, like the one you did with your brother, or like the one where you invite someone to the studio. It'd be stupid to be like, "All right, that's that, that's that one done. Let's move on to a whole different, a whole different series." You'd, you'd be like, mm. "Okay, let me be consistent with this series until it doesn't work, and then consistent with the next series." So, consistency linked with, linked with, yeah, just knowing what's working and what isn't. It's probably the best, best way to go. Yeah, yeah. just keeping an eye, keep, keeping an eye on what is working. Yeah, and and I guess Agreed. what you want to do, like what you actually want to make. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's key, man. Just 
figuring out your style, your voice, and just really tapping into who you are, what your content's about. Mm-hmm. Like I, I go to Jay Cactus video now, and I kind of like I, I know what I'm gonna get. I know Jay Cactus's style. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like no, if I see someone else do Jay Cactus's style, then I'll immediately think Jay Cactus. You think it's Jay Cactus? It's Jay Cactus video. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I still don't even know what my style is. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm just doing tutorials in a way. <laughs> but I still don't know what my style is. I in, couldn't in, explain in it. Sense, that is kind of your style. Like, when I associate, like, the orange, the greens, mm-hmm. the, the way you kind of, your edits are, the, the intro, way your yeah. tutorials are, the way, you, the way you speak, that kind of vibe. Yeah. Mm. The whole, like, oh, yeah. do this thing with your hand, like, and then touch the, <laughs> the camera. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that's you. Yeah. Got you. <laughs> yeah literally yeah and then for what would you say for what would you say yours is ocean i mean to be fair well, you, i think you yours is very... as well where it was but it's more like that wasn't it yeah you did used to I, do I, that my things over the years when i used to be addicted to oats addicted to <laughs> oats. the coffee iced coffee that's so why i used to go like to ice... strike mm-hmm. at one point in my life you know oh yeah the oh, yeah, strike yeah, strike tea wave. yeah 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 <laughs> man you should have capitalized on that <laughs> Put some like waveforms. Yeah, I, I, I could have done strike tees, and I was. And you know what? I was trying to do it. I was trying to get a manufacturer to do it, but it just it wasn't working out. Well, yeah, ocean oats. And now I don't wear stripes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get some ocean oats, and then yeah, who knows? Chucky could have done. You've the, got uh, your own as well. I feel like your your camera settings are always quite like. I don't know. It's like they've got a filter on it, almost like an Instagram filter, where it's kind of like vintagey, orangey vibe. It yeah, looks pretty cool. Yeah, I bought this. Um, I bought it for the the music video, which I still haven't dropped. <laughs> I, need to, I need to drop that. Probably do it oh, yeah. in the summer now. But um, I bought it for that. It was like a a look, you know, like a basically like a filter, but like a a more of like a more of like a, a, a more of a cinematic one. And yeah, I bought it and yeah. I just figured out how to use it. And then, yeah, it kind of embeds the grain into the actual shot and doesn't just overlay it. And yeah, it just like does a few, a few things. But yeah, I really like that look. I think it's kind of nice, just more like warmer kind of look as opposed to like modern. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Yeah. Um, what time are we on? All right, boys, on that note, I'm going to have to bounce. Okay, cool, man. All right. Oh, yo. Oh, well, appreciate please. everyone. Appreciate you all for listening or watching. Um, we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Yeah. Peace. Peace.